Good morning. Everybody's on time today. It's great. I still don't know what time it is, but it's okay. Uh, a delight to be with you today. Uh, a busy week once again uh, as we move our way towards Easter. It's only about a month away, four weeks, I believe. Uh, this Wednesday, again, Lent services at 4 and 6.30. Uh, meals served by church council uh, will be Sloppy Joe's or as we like to call them in Minnesota, barbecues. So it's Sloppy Joe's because I'm from Missouri. So, uh, And then Friday is the uh, spring dinner auction uh, over at the school. Uh, the silent auction begins at 5 and it goes until 7. Dinner's at 6. Live auction starts at 7. Dinner uh, is roast beef and mashed potatoes and gravy and good stuff. Uh, you can reserve a table if you got a bigger group. Otherwise, you can just just come. Uh, it's a free will donation for the meal. Come and have a fun evening. And then next Sunday is the Gaylord Firefighter Pancake Breakfast. That'll be at the Legion from 7 until 1. Uh, if you need tickets, see a firefighter. I've got a few extra. Uh, see me uh, at Donut Fellowship. It's all about food. Why is it always all about food? Uh, Donut Fellowship uh, after church. Uh, and then uh, uh, Joanne is taking orders at the back of church uh, for Easter flowers. A uh, little price list in your uh, announcements today. She'll be doing that uh, the next couple Sundays as well. I think that's all. Uh, our, it's the third Sunday in Lent. Uh, order of service today is Divine Service Setting 3 in our first hymn, 761, Rock of Ages, cleft for me, 761. Uh, blessings to all of you this day. our confession and absolution. It's page 184 in your hymnals and up on the screens. Let us stand together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive the iniquity of my sin. 
O Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing responsibly the intro. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. How lovely is your dwelling place, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading for the third Sunday in Lent is from Exodus chapter 17. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of Zin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you will strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. 
and he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. But more than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together as we hear the words of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It's about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to her, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to her, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. He was called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us of all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven.
be seated for our next hymn, 824. May God bestow on us his grace, 824. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of Christ, what do you do when the world changes in an instant? It happens, right? Some of you may remember December 7th, 1941, the world changed in an instant. Or closer to home in the United States in November of 1963, I believe it was, JFK was shot. You remember where you were and what you were doing? How about September 11th, 2001? A little closer to time. People remember where they were and what they were doing. What about this week, three years ago? You remember? Three years ago, that's when it all started, when the world literally changed in an instant. One Sunday we were gathering in church, the next Sunday we weren't. One day we were all in school together, the next we weren't. One day there was yeah, plenty of toilet paper in the grocery store, and the next day there wasn't. Three years. Life has changed quite a bit. Things were put on hold for quite a bit. I mean, even churches closed down. People had to stay home in fear. Fear of what could happen. Now remember last Sunday we heard about Nicodemus? Remember that reading from John chapter 3? Remember, he got a one-on-one -on -one conversation, a sit-down with Jesus. And hopefully you remember, right? He didn't get to ask what he wanted to know. Instead, 
Remember, Jesus told him what he needed to know. And I'm sure there's still a lot we'd like to ask God today. What's happening now? Especially in our society, the way it's changing in an instant each and every day. God, how long is this going to last? God, how bad is this going to get? God, why is this happening? But remember, with Nicodemus, God doesn't tell all we want to know. Just what we need to know. And that's the point. God tells us what we need to know. All the rest of that... He simply says, trust me. Trust me, I am your father. Trust me, I sent my son to save you. Trust me at all times. Trust me in all circumstances. Trust me, even when it seems like things are going on that you can't understand. You see, God doesn't cut and run when the going gets tough. No, God steps steps up even to the cross. So no matter what happens in our world, if things change in an instant, this uncertain world and society in which we live, he says, trust me. You can count on him. I mean, it's not the first time things change in an instant, right? This isn't the first time the the world has changed it changes all the time now as we're getting closer to holy week it's just a few weeks away already there's a week that really changed the world when not just many people in the world but the very son of god died died for the whole world we heard that last week right for god so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. His son who died to save us from all the circumstances of change in our world. To save us from everything. To save us from our sin. The sin that has infected each and every one of us. Yes, it's kind of like a virus, isn't it? That sin but he died, died so that we would live, so that we could have that immunity, that we would not be separate from him forever, never have to worry about it again. And all that, all of that became yours. It became yours in one moment that changed your life forever. Right there when you were baptized. When all that Jesus did for you that holy week that changed the events of the world forever, that became yours. Your sin divinely healed with his forgiveness, with his life, with his salvation. Nothing, nothing else can happen to you that can top that. Your now and your future, they're safe. Safe in the hands of your Savior, Jesus Christ. So yeah, be wise, be careful, be smart, but don't fear. Don't fear. You see, Jesus' love, his love for you is perfect, but ours isn't, right? Right? Our love, love comes and goes, goes up and down, love falls short, right? The people we thought we could count on, they let us down. The people that thought they could count on us, we disappoint them. Our failure to love, it causes all sorts of trouble and fear in our lives and and in the world. We heard an example of that today in that gospel reading. The Samaritan woman at the well. (laughs) 
earthly love had let her down, right? Time after time after time after time after time, right? Five times. Five times she'd been married, and five times those marriages ended. Divorce or, or death or a combination of both, we're not told. But we are told that the man she's living with now is not even her husband. I wonder, perhaps she had given up on love. But it wasn't just the men, right? She comes out to the well. What time was it when she came out to the well? Do you remember from the reading? About the sixth hour. Sixth hour is about noon. All right? Not the time you go to get your water. You get water either early in the morning or late in the evening. Well, because you can either have it for the whole day or you can get it at night for the next day. And it's also cooler in the morning and cooler in the evening. You see, hauling water is hard work. You go there because it's cooler. You go there because that's when everybody else goes. It's an opportunity to gather, to fellowship. Except if you're not welcome and you're forced to come out in the heat of the day. Twelve o'clock, noon, all alone. No one to talk to, no one to share your day with. It was like this woman was contagious, right? Don't want to have what she has. We don't want to talk to her. She's too great a sinner for us. And we also heard in that, re that reading, right, the Jews and the Samaritans, they really didn't get along. They didn't normally even talk to each other. Here is this woman coming to the well every day at noon in need of love. Thirsting for love. Any love. And this day love shows up. I mean, walks right up to her at the well and sits down. A chance meeting, a coincidence, some might say, but definitely not. Here was Jesus for her. Oh, and, and he loves her, right? He's going to be going to the cross for her soon, for her sins, in perfect love, laying down his life for her. And, and Jesus wants her to know that. Jesus wants her to know him as her Savior, the one who does not reject her, even if the rest of the town does, right? Even if the rest of the world does. He does not. In fact, he wants her to be his bride, to be part of his bride, the church. So they have this conversation. Unlike the conversation with Nicodemus last week, no, this lady, this Samaritan, she gets to ask her questions, and Jesus answers them. And Jesus speaks of something beyond being a, a Jew or a Samaritan, something that supersedes nationality, something that supersedes where you come from or where you live or even where you worship. Jesus says God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. There are some people today who are, who are spiritual, but don't have the truth. There are some who have the truth, but are not spiritual. The key is that to worship is spirit and truth. And that to worship is in Jesus. Because he is the truth. And the Spirit gives us Jesus and his gifts. That's what worship is all about. That's what gathering here is all about. It's why we call it the divine service. Because when we gather here, here is the divine serving us. Here is the divine giving his gifts to us, forgiveness, life, 
and salvation through his word and, and through the sacraments. No matter who you are, no matter where you live, no matter what your nationality is, those gifts are given here. Now before Jesus in the Old Testament, that divine service was restricted to the temple. Right? Remember the temple where all the sacrifices took place? But now that Jesus has come, that once and for all sacrifice has been made, the Spirit has unleashed, and that divine service has gone out into the world to every pulpit, altar, and font where Jesus is present in His Word and with His Spirit. Just like it was at a well in Samaria. His love, His forgiveness, His life, there for the woman at the well, the same here for you. His love, his forgiveness, his life here for you. Well, we can definitely say the woman at the well, her life changed in a moment, in an instant. Right? A day that started out like any other for her turned out to be different than any other. The love that she was so thirsty for was poured out into her. Now, the portion of the reading we don't have today, we're, we're told she goes back to town. She goes back into town and tells all these people who have looked down upon her that have made her go to the well at noon for so many years. She goes and tells them, come on, come see this guy. Come see this man that told me everything I ever did. I think she probably said more than that, though. I'm sure she said something like that. Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did and didn't reject me. You see, that's the amazing part. That's the truly incredible part. I mean, apparently, everyone in town already knew, right? I mean, it's a small town. Something happens here in Gaylord in a small town. By noon, everybody knows. They knew she'd been married five times. They knew the man she was with right now wasn't even her husband. But here was a man who showed her that love and did not reject her. Showed her that perfect love and she was thirsty no more. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus knows all that you have done as well. All that you have done. All the sins you're ashamed of. The sins you're proud of. The sins you've kept hidden from others so that you look good and upright. Jesus knows each and every one. Which is good. It's good because it means he died for them as well. Every single one. Jesus came to be with us and wasn't afraid of catching that virus of sin. No, here he is spending time with the Samaritan woman. Touches lepers. He was the one who was embracing the sinners. In fact, his perfect love caused him to come. Specifically to catch what we have. To take it away. To take our sin away from us and give us his divine healing. And that's exactly what he's done. You see, it, it wasn't the nails that took his life. It was your sin. It was my sin. But because they did, you now have life. The one who died on the cross for you the one that gives you the living waters of forgiveness and love that you would never thirst again and that you would never be fearful again of, of life changing in an instant. Because with Christ, in Christ, and with your eyes and faith focused on Christ, you have what the world needs. And the world is falling apart. The confidence in the world is shaken. 
The future is indeed uncertain, but you have what nothing in this world can change or take away. You have those living waters that Christ has come to give. He is with you in life. He is with you in death. Right? For richer, for poorer, sickness and health, right? To put it into those terms, that perfect love for you, that living water given to you, all yours. Because you are his. So let us go out like the Samaritan woman did and tell others, I know this guy, this guy who knows everything I've ever done. And he still accepts me for who I am. His bride. His church. Amen. And now may the peace of God, that peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let us stand together as we continue with the offertory. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, you have brought us to dwell in your house and called us to worship you in spirit and truth. Receive our praise and hear our prayers that we would leave this place satisfied with your living water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you have made us righteous through Jesus Christ and made peace with us by his cross. Lead us to embrace our suffering in faith as they shape us in his image and prepare us to behold your glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord of hosts, bless the nations of the world that both citizens and authorities would seek justice, peace, and the common good of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord of hosts, help the sick and suffering especially those who desire our prayers, Joanne, Luann, Verona, Dave, Melford, B, Greg, Jean, Micah, Jim, Steve, Marlene, and Harlan. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, will heal them. Comfort all those who mourn, fill their hearts with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord of hosts, grant us safe haven in you, that we who bear the weight of this world and its sorrows would always long for your courts and the blessings you have prepared for those who sing your praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, Heavenly Father, to you all hearts are open and all sins are known. Strengthen our hearts by your grace, that we who daily sin much would make confession boldly and then joyfully re receive your precious word of absolution. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offerings to the Lord.
us stand together as we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Merciful God, you have taught us the way of your commandments. We implore you to pour out your grace into our hearts, cause it to bear fruit in us, that being ever mindful of your mercies and your laws, we may always be directed to your will and daily increase in love toward you and one another. Enable us to resist all evil and to live a godly life. Help us to follow the example of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to walk in his steps until we shall possess the kingdom that has been prepared for us in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Maybe seated for our closing hymn 430. My song is Love Unknown 430. 